So, it's been about a week since our lives started to get flipped and turned upside down. So, uh, I'd like to take a minute, and just sit right there. I won't tell you how I became the, the Prince of Bel Air, but I uh, just want to share just a couple thoughts with you. Um, you know, when it all happened uh, a few days ago, I guess the first kind of big, big event here in the United States was uh, was basketball getting shut down. Uh, for me, as a huge basketball fan, uh, you know that uh, that saddened me probably more than it should. Because um, I had the next couple months planned out uh, through March Madness, the NBA playoffs, and all that good stuff. Um, so that was the first kind of realization that uh, you know, things are about to change. Um, Little did I know what else was coming. Um, and for all of us, we've been affected in some way. Uh, some types of, of inconveniences um, have presented themselves in our lives. But, uh, you know, I got to thinking, and, um, I mean, you know, Holy Spirit inspired or uh, anything good that I think has, has got to come from Him, um, is that instead of focusing on these inconveniences, we can focus on uh, one huge opportunity uh, that we're presented with right now. And I'd say most, if not all of us, have the chance to kind of push the reset button on our lives, uh, to refocus on what's most important. Uh, we've all been allotted uh, some extra free time that we uh, didn't have before, uh, some rest from maybe some responsibilities um, that we have in our lives. And with that extra bit of free time, however much it is for you, I challenge you to reconnect with, with our Creator, uh, with our Heavenly Father. That's what's most important. Uh, and times like now when tomorrow is so uncertain and a few months from now are even more uncertain, uh, what better time to reconnect with Him? Now, depending on where you are, uh, that may seem more difficult. Uh, for some than for others, but I assure you that we're all in the same boat, um, that God is near, uh, that He loves you, uh, and that He wants to reconnect with you um, as badly as we need to reconnect with Him. Um, it's, uh, it's easy, but it seems challenging sometimes, and, and I think for a lot of us we may just not know where to begin when it comes to connecting with God through prayer we tend to overcomplicate it, but it's simply sitting down and, and uh, just sharing our heart with him, uh, like, a, like a small child to, to his father. Uh, it's just talking to him, letting him know what we're worried about, what concerns us, uh, telling him our hopes and our dreams, and, uh, and lifting up those people that we love and care about, which we all have a, a lot right now on our minds. And what better way to handle it than, than to give it all over to Him? Uh, to take that chance to reconnect, to refocus. And then, you know, life is going to continue. Life is going to get back to normal at some point. And hopefully during this time, we've, we've developed a habit of spending time with, with our Father in Heaven. And then we'll love that and enjoy that so much that, that we'll want to continue that more importantly than, than anything else that we've been doing. Uh, when, when everything else creeps back into our lives and all of those responsibilities come back, we know how important that time with our Creator is. And it'll be easier to continue that. So I challenge you to start it now. Again, if you're still not sure where to begin, um, our church did a, did a study over the spiritual disciplines a couple months ago and, and uh, caused me to, to by this book, Celebration of Discipline, um, by Richard Foster. And, uh, you know, taking it slow, trying to incorporate some of these in my life. And the first, the preface of the book gives you something so simple to do. And uh, I think especially for us, where you, like me, may have filled some of this free time with more social media, uh, with more time wasted on our phones. Uh, so this simple activity uh, may first help us to, to get out of that addiction and replace it with something better. 
and it's a simple kind of seven day rhythm. Uh, on day one, uh, you take 30 minutes, turn off all technology. Uh, you know, make a good cup of, of coffee or tea, find a quiet place to sit, inside, outside, and just pray aloud these words from Psalms 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That one simple prayer. And then be still. No writing, no talking, nothing. The objective is to clear away all of our creaturely activity, to use a phrase from, from the old writers. It's, again, it's, it's, it's easier than it seems um, just to be silent before our God and allow him to search your heart, search your mind, guide your thoughts. And then the first day I did this, um, kind of confronted with, um, with my sinful nature. I had some things that, that, that I hadn't realized were going on inside me, within me, um, and challenged to, to take action, to let God begin changing my heart, and healing my heart. On day two, again, 30 minutes, not a lot of time, and you probably have that free now. Uh, be free of all technology. But this time take a walk and allow your footsteps to fall into the rhythm of your whispering of what's called the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. A very simple prayer. And take a walk, whether it's around your house, whether it's on a trail, um, wherever it might be, and just pray that prayer. It may seem simple, but challenge you to try doing it and, and see how, how God works through that. Day three, turn off all technology for 30 minutes. And this time, begin with this simple prayer. O Spirit of God, blow across my little life and let me drink in your great life. Amen. And then, slowly, Pray the words of the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples when they asked him to teach them to pray. Uh, found in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, um, Jesus prays, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The only difference with this, when you pray this prayer, is that you would interject your, your own thoughts and concerns after each, um, each phrase of the prayer. And as you slowly pray through that and lift up the people uh, you're concerned about, lift up the, the sins uh, we need to confess and, and, and the help we need to forgive those who have sinned against us. And, and throughout all of that prayer, uh, it will probably take you to or past that 30 minute mark. Just slowly praying through the Lord's Prayer. Day four, five, and six, you do the same thing is one, two, and three. And then on day seven, use your technology as you will. And I bet you'll find um, through this process that you know, it doesn't bring us as much satisfaction as, as we really are looking for. Um, try that if you need somewhere to start. And, uh, and I challenge you to pick up a book. Uh, again, this is a great one, great place to begin. Um, get on Amazon, check out what, what books there are. I love uh, Francis Chan and everything he's written. Um, Crazy Love, Forgotten God. Um, get to uh, Donald Miller, books like Blue Like Jazz, um, and uh, Searching for, for God Knows What. Um, just something to, to get you thinking, connected to God, and praying to Him 
um, in a new way. Open up your Bibles and start reading through a gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, uh, just let that word become alive in your life uh, more than ever before. Um, stuck at home with your families, with your kids, um, and uh, you need to find a quiet space, just let your kids know, hey, I'm, I'm going to go pray and read for 30 minutes. Um, you know, let me know if an emergency comes up, but let me have this time with God. And your kids will honor that, I think, I hope. Um, and maybe even try incorporating devotions with your family. Uh, we tried this, sadly, the first time that we as a family have done it. Our boys are six and nine. And um, this year, uh, for Christmas, we got this book, Love Does, for kids. Uh, another great author, Bob Goff, and uh, writes this with his daughter. And we go through one, uh, one story a week. Uh, it wasn't easy. There were, there were a couple times that we did it, uh, and, our, and our son, Knox, um, was, uh, was just not having it. Uh, he was really tired one night and was climbing all over the couch, and, uh, and, and I lost my patience, and, and we just stopped. Uh, we just said, forget it. Um, and I wish I hadn't, but I just want to let you know, hey, sometimes it's tough. Uh, we've, we, we've toughed through that, and though, you know, a couple weeks um, where it was more difficult, there have been amazing just times we've spent together as a family. And with our son, Knox, the coolest thing is seeing him uh, pray. Uh, how he has uh, loved praying. Uh, he wants to start the prayer each time. He wants to uh, make sure we're praying for, for each person uh, in our lives that need it. He asks those people how they're doing when he sees them next. And, and we're seeing this side of Knox that we never would have seen. Um, and, uh, and that's been probably the most amazing part, uh, seeing him grow that way. Uh, it's been good for our family. And uh, again, I just challenge you to, to try something. Uh, right now, it's the best time. So, refocus, reconnect uh, to your Creator, uh, to our Heavenly Father. And uh, as you do that, um, your life will be changed. I'll leave you with a couple verses. Matthew 6, 33, the end of uh, what's called the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus tells his audience, uh, he's just been talking to them about not worrying, uh, which can be a concern right now. He says not to worry. Um, instead, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And everything you need will be given to you as well. So don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough worries of its own. Take it one day at a time. Trust that God's in control. Seek him first. Everything else will fall into place. And in the, in the book of James, um, he reminds us towards the end of his letter that if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. And he follows that um, for us to wash our hands and purify our hearts. Um, what better message than, uh, than right now? So thanks for, for watching, and, uh, and I hope I hope you take advantage of this opportunity in the best way and reconnect uh, with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.